you still in my head. Is that oh, new? That were you not? Oh, you weren't here the other. Yeah, yeah, you weren't here Wednesday when it happened. Yeah, that's we started that Wednesday. I was. I felt like I was dancing to the last one. Yeah, did you like it? Yeah, it's good. It's good. I like it. Yeah. Anyway, welcome back to the finish line, and this is another episode of Talking Points, where we're going to go back to all the news, racing stuff, and everything that happened over the past week. As you can see, Dino Dave is missing. Um, won't tell me what he's doing, so he's probably courting a young, a young raptor, shall we say? This Someone texted me today and said, "I said Dave wasn't on," and uh, and they said, "Oh, probably off for of the young one." I said, "Probably, yeah, yeah." There's th no other reason. He's either in his house, up in my house, in the gym, or he's, hello. Like, he's not off in your house, mate. <laughs> God, he if he went into my house, he'd roam with them three kids. <laughs> Run. <sighs> Hold up, Hatter and Kate. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good start. <laughs> Imagine. No, but yeah, I look, I don't know what he's doing. He won't tell me. He keeps sending me winky eyes or something when I tell him. I ask him what's he up to. He says he just needs a day off. So. Fair enough. We all need one of those every now and again. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're going to. We have. News that was actually brought to my attention by Gavin Lynch about a bit of betting, uh, what's it called? Betting irreg irregular, irregular betting patterns on Betfair. I got there in the end. <laughs> the sentence we got backwards. Um, we get to that in a minute. But before that, uh, our punters challenge, the finishing line version, our accumulated leaderboard. The winners have been announced. They've been contacted, and this is the finishing order. Now, I have to say something. Dave wouldn't have been fifth. I came third and I pulled out because I'm not taking money out of my own thing, my bob. But so I was third. So Dave didn't finish above me. Anyway, just get back to it. Above me, anyway. I missed a week and I was I was gone at I was gone at the game. Yeah, that that, that screwed you over. You would have been yeah. up around. Um, so all the winners have been contacted. All the money has been credited to their Hollywood bets accounts. Um, Foggy, which is Brian Faulkner, my brother-in-law, had an absolute stormer to get up to fort on the last day. Um, the first place, EFCL9, has donated his winnings to Irish Horse Racing Trust. So, fair play to him. And I hope all the rest of you are out there winning a bit of cash with your winnings. So, the next one is being planned and it's about to be announced very soon. And yeah. Are, oh, any, oh, are any more of them your um your family members or relatives? Nah, none of them. <laughs> I just Brian. think it, it brings me back to um our first our first um our first live preview in Revolution. Um and obviously we were kind of just getting going then and mm. you know holding a holding a live preview and finding the right times and everything is tricky enough. So we had a decent crowd there. Um, but obviously, it was a lot of um, a lot of my family were there, a lot of Dave's family, a lot of your family were there, and we had a raffle with loads of prizes. <laughs> and uh, every time we pulled one out, it was looking up at which family member was. Like it was like, it was like my from. side, my family was that side. Siobhan and all all the rest of them were that side. Dave's yeah. are there, and uh, number twenty six. Yeah, oh Christ, number forty two. Yeah. Didn't he have to look just at the point? <laughs> So funny. And for the people that actually won the tickets to punch us down and won the trip to punch us down, they will be still valid when we're allowed to go. So you will be, I know who's won it. I've been in contact with them already. So you will get new tickets. You will still get your trip to the Louis Fitzgerald Ho Ho Hotel and so on and so forth. Uh, so hopefully next year we'll all be able to go. There's going to be some amount of, we've we've got the same with Pimlico, some amount of prize winners like for tickets to the Dublin Race Investment stuff. Oh, <laughs> it's just you... rolling over and over. It's going to be half the world is going to be trying to get into these festivals. They're going to be sellouts when, they're, when they come around because everyone's going to be owed tickets for a competition. Oh, I can't wait to go. It's like the crowd at the FA Cup final yesterday. It's just magnificent, wasn't it? And the Preakness last night, did you see that? The crowd there as well. Did you see them in their little... Little fenced off little dancing yeah. area. <laughs> I wanted one of those. Oh, stop. That and a glass of champagne is, is one of, one of them in the car park now in Ascot. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, anyway, speaking of prizes, um, our competition for the, the mug named the winner of the 150 at Newbury, and the winner was Creative Force. So the winner that was pulled out at random is Paul Smith. So, Paul, you uh, get in contact with uh, me on yeah email, the finishing line. 2017 at hotmail.com or DM the finish line on Twitter or Instagram and just send me on your address, what silks you want on it, and I get it done next week and send out you. Uh, any well other done. stuff? No, no other stuff before we go on. Uh, oh, how is Cool Arcade settling? He's good, he's chilled out already. Um, he's going out in the he's been out in the paddock. I bought him up to a garden for the first time today. He had a little look around there, um, and uh, yeah, he's in he's in good form. We're up to forty some forty something percent sold. Could be forty five, forty seven and a half, something like that. Um, so uh, yeah, it's going well. He's That's an good. easy horse to sell, really. Um, Very yeah. easy. Yeah. Very easy. Lots of improvement, and he's going to take it to at worst the Punchdown Festival. Exactly. Yeah, no, there's a, there's loads of fun to be had with that line. He's massive as well. I still can't. He towers over Zoff, like, you know. He's just a much bigger build. So, um, Oh, well, we're on this. Can we just get on to Thursday? I am shitting it already. Wait, what's... Oh. You know you know what I'm like and how pessimistic I am about life in general, really. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, we free, en- free Pimlico entries. All three horses that were in full training. Are all entered and all look like they're going to get a run on Thursday. I and you're, you're, you are bad enough when there's one running. Uh, now there's going to be three on the same day. It's I'm going to need tranquilizers or something the night before. I'm not. I'm not going to sleep Wednesday night. I might I, just take Thursday off work because I'm not going to be able to work. I think you'll start smoking that day. Oh yeah. Anything. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous. I can't think about it. I'm just pushing it down the line. Oh. Tuesday, the declarations are up. That's when it'll all become real, and we'll see if we've got that many runners. But uh, How is Shauna looking to get in? Uh, she's six in a ballot. So I'm just looking at the name of the person you blocked. That's brilliant. <laughs> what a weirdo. Um, he's an absolute... Like, <laughs> I know. Just, we're not even... Don't even give him the air. Man, yeah. um, she's January. six in the ballot. I think. It's boring now at this stage. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, she, yeah, she's got a chance of getting in, so we'll see. Um, Mac Feast gets in, and they're dividing, um, they're dividing Cotty's race, so she'll get in as well. So, be interesting. That's her debut for us. Mac Feast, the second time over hurdles, and shown a seasonal reappearance. So, I wonder, does Henry need anyone to lead him around that day? Be one way of getting in. You imagine oh, yeah. going. Imagine going to races free runners. Ah, oh, insane stuff. Well, Absolutely. you're. It's about to become a reality, Tom. Next Thursday is going to happen. Yeah, pinch yourself, moment. That. Imagine if the three of them won. Ah, stop now. Yeah. Jesus, if we got one winner, I would be delighted. But you win, don't gonna, worry. yeah, we, we, yeah, we'll go through them on Wednesday if they're running. Yeah. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Some place chances, I'd hope, anyway. At least I hope one of them will be placed, anyway. Well, it's not bad for a syndicate that's set up just over a year, is it? Just over a year? Uh, July, not even a year. Not even a year. Three runs on the same card. Three runs on the same card. Happy days. Yeah. Right, as Tom Tom said, we we, we, hopefully they're all running, and on Wednesday we will go through them all. Right, so... As I was saying, I was Gavin Lynch rang me on Thursday about a race at Clonmel at six fifty-five. So there are some betting irregularities in this just before or off. So to get a background picture, the horse is be really careful here as well. We yeah, spoke yes. about it. Before we get onto this, we are not accusing anyone. Like we're not accusing Gavin Cromwell, we're not ch- accusing uh Jonathan Moore, anyone. This is just Betting Straight in there with the names. <laughs> it's good to know. It's the name of the horse, the who's riding it, blah, 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 so on. Not accusing any of them whatsoever. This is just veteran patterns that just went very weird, very quickly, very, very close to the off. So the horse is Chantil Lucky. Um, won a handicap the, about 
less than two weeks before at Down Royal. Won by, I think it was a half a length. He goes into this 6 to 4 favour when the, when the betting opened the night before. He was fluctuating from 6 to 4 and 11 to 10 on the day. Look, it was a, it's a poor, poor race on paper. He was the highest rated uh, off 98, up six pounds from his last one. Step up and trip, wordy favours, looked like he was the one improving, best horse in the race. Um, so on Thursday of the race, he was 2.5 on Betfair. Uh, so say that was 2.5 up to about half six. So about half six, he was 3.1 at Betfair. Then around 6.45, he was 2.8. Okay? Nothing out of the ordinary there. Still favours. So around six minutes before the off, he went from 2.8 out to 4.6 SP on Betfair. You know more than me now about how quickly these can happen or why they happen on Betfair. Like, there was nothing... To award, not even to put you off to think that too lay him in a race like that. Clearly, a big strong fancy from his last race. Ground was fine. Ground was officially good. Good yielding. People were calling it. Uh, if you go back and watch the race, jumped well, travelled well. Final circle, same again. On the hill, back down again. Just getting squeezed along, nothing too or squeezed along, still there with his chance. By the time the camera angle turned two furlongs after he down the hill, he was pulled up. So that then rings alarm bells of what's going on here. The drift getting pulled up, so on and so forth. Fet checked him after the race, blowing after the race he was. So to me, if you're blowing after the race, you're unfit. So he ran less than two weeks ago. He's not unfit. This could just be a coincidence, but Gavin thinks that, was saying this is big news. This is needs to be looked at because it's happening time and time again. Not again by Gavin Cromwell or anyone like that. Just betting apartments, horse racing in general. One that springs to mind uh, it was a Viking Horde, Charles Barnes. Drifted before they off, went off like stupid price and was favourite. Um, Tom. You know more about these betting patterns and so on. How often does this happen if you can? like, You can't trace back to a name. You can trace back to a count number if you contact... like Gavin contacted the HRB. Um, and he was talking to do, 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 Declan Buckley, who is the deputy uh, of, of security for Chris Gordon, which is the head of security for the OHRB. Um, they're out there passing it on. They're at they're looking into the betting patterns now. Um, but John Moore said he just ran flat and blah blah blah, so on and so forth. Um, look, first off, how regular would this happen? Does it happen? And second off, is there a way to find a way to stop it? Because on Betfair, it's getting very easy to to let. Not, to make it easier to win money by someone losing. Yeah, I think that's always been the case with Betfair. Um, the, it, it happens quite often, right? And and the ones where you'll see it happen are overnight or early morning gambles that, that get backed well in and the bookmakers want to keep their price short because of, um, because of their liability but the price on Betfair will drift before the off and it will get much bigger. That's just the market correcting itself, basically. Um, this one, I've, I've seen the figures, all right? Um, I've seen the figures and I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of an odd one. Um, to drift that markedly right before the off um, is a bit strange. But I think this, and this is my point on it, and this is where I think it needs to lead, is, so, okay, so that doesn't look normal. It looks a little bit strange. So what we should be doing now as the IHRB is we should be requesting um, the, the the account numbers, basically, of, of any bets that were on that horse to lay over two grand or three grand. Um, I think that's a reasonable amount. Um and you should be looking into who those people are. Um, and I just think, I said to you just before this, if we if we went and scratched the surface with Betfair 
and who bets on horses and from what countries they bet on horses with and their bets on them. Um, I don't think it had painted a very nice picture. Mm. That's um, the thing. And... I, Go on, yeah, I don't, and I don't think there's too much of an appetite to go and do it. As they said, everything was done by procedure. The horse was favoured. It pulled up. They The vet examined it. It, it. it blew hard. They've asked the jockey what happened. He said it stopped quickly. I watched the race, and that is kind of what happened, really. Um, whether the horse has just bounced the moon and back um, because he'd won, and that was a, a clear improvement in form, who knows? Um, but I, I, I just think it's something... Um, you know, we need to be looking in, into closer and uh, they are improving on it, but you need to get the whole picture and the whole picture includes the betting exchanges. It's not just the horse, the jockey, the trainer's mm. explanation. The whole picture includes includes the the, the, the betting exchanges. I, I think that is, if you go back to the Charles Burns case, I remember saying I'm, I'm amazed he got anything. Because what they did him for in the end was leaving his horse unattended for mm. half an hour, which nearly every trainer, I guarantee you every trainer has done that at some stage. It's just impossible to sometimes not to. And and you would think when you're in a secure premises that has security on the gate, such as a stable yard at the races, you'd think you're, you're in a bloody safe place. If mm. you're going to leave your horse anywhere, that's the safest place to leave him. And... Um, that I think was one of the key pieces of evidence was the exchange bet on that horse that laid him um, in a, 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 in another country. I, I think when they were weighing that up, I, in my mind, that would have been one of the key pieces of evidence. Um, and yeah, I just think we need to look into it a, a lot more if things happen like that. Um, like, there may oh. be there may be absolutely nothing in it at all. Hmm, but there might, my... at the same time, there might be. So I, I just think you need the whole picture, and the whole picture includes betting exchanges, everything like that, and knowing who the people are. Like, if people don't, people don't know, like, you, if you do see something like this, you can actually contact the IHRB and say it to them and say, look, there's this certain thing I think was blah, blah, blah. They look into it. It's their job to look into it. But, like, it's... There's no way, there's no real way to get into the people because you can't get their names. Even the private, the privacy bloody laws stop you from getting names. All Betfair can do is give you an account number. You don't know the face behind that. There's a there's a wall there to get to the end of it. You can't yeah, I think, I think that's where the grey area comes into it, doesn't it? If you don't know who's placing these bets, Betfair know. Betfair yeah. know exactly who they are. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, it, it's it's interesting. Look, it goes on. It's like it's like any time a horse gets punted at the minute, the trainer just comes out and says, "Oh, I didn't know anything about it." Mm. It's like that's hard to imagine. Now, on the flip side of that, Mac Feast on his hurdling debut in Cork last week or the week before, fourteen week. to one into nine to two before the off, right? And I'm sat there and I'm getting text messages of, uh, of owners. I get text messages of my family, text messages of you guys. And I'm saying, I have no idea what's going on here. Genuinely no idea. And we had a conversation before the race. And we were like, what the hell is this mm. all about? Um, and no idea. The horse ran as expected. He's, he's going to take a little bit of time to sweeten up his jumping. Um, he needs to learn to jump a bit better. But, um, yeah, no idea where it came from. It's just something completely unrelated to the trainer, the jockey, the owners. So it does happen. Like, what in what do you do in that case? Like, yeah. th this could be exactly the same. It could be absolutely nothing to do. And they might not have a clue what's going on. Like, if that someone is... asked me what was going on, everyone asked me what was going on the other week. And I was like, I haven't a clue what's going on. Like, that's a great example. Because if that mm. happens and you genuinely, you're sitting there like you didn't know, none of us knew what was going on. And the IHRB goes, what was going on there? No idea. Yeah. <laughs> and they're thinking, it yeah, can, you must it be can happen. It can happen that it, it's just completely unrelated and like you've no idea what goes on. But yeah, I, I think I think closer work and relationships with with the exchanges and um, 
you know, we just go from there. But it, they're tough, and the evidence side of things is very, very, very tough to mm. to collaborate. That somebody has collaborated to uh, to do that is very, very hard to prove. Very true. Look, uh, um, from what I was I was talking to Gavin about, he was saying like. It's something that needs to be brought to the attention of everyone. Like, as, as us, as betters, it's going to affect us. It's like, the general public, if you're thinking, for that instance, the horse on Thursday, you looking at it for a layman's person, looking at a six to four fair one last time, only up six pounds in a bad race. Yeah. She has a good chance of following up. Then all of a sudden, you see this thing drift six minutes before the off. That's like screwing the normal everyday punter. Yeah, well, it depends. It it depends if 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 those in the know were were doing anything. But it it also a lot of a lot of some of the drifts on the exchanges of the markets correcting themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, you'd all you know, like you'd see a good few times the prices that aren't right, especially overnight prices. Uh, there was a horse. What price that horse got? Off? There was a horse at Wexford today. It was eleven to ten yesterday, and I think went off. Um, Ron Cornwell or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what price this? Oh, he went off six. He went off six point four. On Betfair. Yeah. Yeah. And that wasn't that wasn't anything untoward. I think that was just its its opportunity and its chance um, reflecting itself. Mm. Um, I think I think that's all that was really. Um, maybe the ground went against it, but not too much. But you know, I just think eleven to ten last night was a silly price, and it just corrected itself. So uh, look, that goes on. I think Dave Smith said um, in the comments. Dave Smith, you might want to block someone again. It's a weird person there. <laughs> Bye. Um. Dave Smith said there, in your opinion, do either the IHIB and or the Jockey Club have the appetite to examine, examine dodgy betting patterns fully? No. No. <laughs> is, 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 the straightforward, uh, is a straightforward answer. Um, we don't have the appetite to examine where money is coming into the game um, and who whose money that is. We've got bloody kidnapping cases against owners. We've mass money laundering and wow. and federal court um things against against other owners who were banned from having runners in other countries but they they can still have runners here one yeah. of the huge huge massive operations um got called out by their trainers uh, a couple of years ago because they hadn't paid them in a year um you know Ooh. i can't i'm not, I, I, I'm not going to mention on here because i'm not sure how it ended up whether it, it it came out that that had happened but um yeah um tell me after it's uh yeah there's it's it's money and i think we we sometimes see as money coming into our game where we just turn a blind eye as where it's coming to and i think the same with dodgy betting patterns unless it's going to work for them in a case it's the power of brown envelopes tom it's not i don't even think it's brown envelopes it's it's just a case of oh look with the ownership thing it's uh it's a case of they're pumping this much money into the sport. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, with the betting patterns thing, I think it's very, very, very difficult. I think you could set up a team of people to go through betting patterns in Ireland alone. You'd need a team yeah. five or six times the size of that in the UK if you were going to do the same thing. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. And you still won't get to the bottom of it because you can't get names. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, look, as Gavin said, if anyone ever sees anything that they think is dodgy or anything, you can contact the uh, IHRB. And look, if you don't want to, like, email us, we'll do it. We've no problems of asking questions. The worst they're going to say is piss off. <laughs> Fair enough. On you go. <laughs> On you go. <laughs> Next question. Um, right. We will move on to the racing that happened the weekend. And midweek at York, we'll start off. Uh, Queen Power, very impressive in the group two Middleton. Clocked a fa few fast, se fast sections as well. This is according to Dave because he was telling me about it. I didn't see this race. 
Um, I see in the finish of the race, she pulled miles clear. Very good performance. Yeah, really, really good performance. Um, looks a very, very nice horse to be honest. And uh, yeah, the one you'd want to, you wouldn't want to be backing against her the next time, would you? Or you certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want to be laying her or anything like that. So yeah, very good performance. Could end up, um, from what I've seen, could end up against Palace Pier and the Queen Anders, Royal Ascot. We get on to him after he's looked fan. Yeah, that'd be a good race. Um, right, enough of that. That was a dodgy race. Right, Hurricane Lane, Tom. Got the business done in the Dante. Yes. I love the flat, Lance. I keep telling you, I love the flat. Um, All turns around when you get a good winner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was uh it was um it was good really. I thought he was he was good. See, I thought he definitely bloody stays. He was off the bridle a long way out. Holly Doyle went a million in front and really made it a good test. Mm. Um, and I thought he stayed on very well, really. Um, got the job done, put his head down. Really nice performance onto the derby now, where he is. A short yeah, yeah. I, I think was saying I did. back in the 16s before. So, what's up? Oh, sorry. Dave just texted me. I. I said the wrong horse, apparently, according to him. See, now, this wouldn't happen if you got your arse in here and get it out of the bed, kick her out of the bed and get in the car and get over here. Why? What horse did you say? Queen Power. Well, who did he say? Hold up now. That's who I was on about, anyway. <laughs> yeah. so that's why he taught me. Winter Power, apparently. Oh, Winter Power. Whoops. Whoops. Um... He said, F, Queen Power, hater. Okay. See, this is what this is what happens when you're not here. False information yeah. gets Dave, ping and like, false ac false accusations that you'll be in, in bed with someone right now, which is probably not false. But anyway, we need not here Dave before. to um, we need Dave, Dave to tell us where these horses are going. Like I'm like, yeah, that was a lovely race, wasn't it? Apart from the Derby ones, I've no idea where they're going most of them. Uh, Why'd you make a high definition? I thought it was still a very promising run. Irish Derby winner. Think so. I wouldn't I wouldn't even bring him to Epsom. I wouldn't even think about it. He's an absolute not? shit show. He's really? just too green. He's just way, way too green. Irish Derby and and go from there with him. Maybe even um maybe even the ledger. I, just I don't know. I, I, th I thought he was uh, I thought yeah, he do, he was fairly green still, but surely going to come on again for that. I'm surprised he's shorter in the market than, than Hurricane Lane. Hurricane Lane is 15 to 2 right now, and high definition is 9 to 2. He's dead. He was the horse to take out the race, but I'm just sticking to what I was saying, and that backed it up even more in my head that mm. um, Epsom is just going to be too tricky for him at this stage of his career. Mm. Uh, was, speaking of Derby, um, John Leeper done everything wrong and still won. As Dave was saying, is Frankel horses, they all have their quirks. Uh, look, his bread in the pink, it's you couldn't get asked for any better bloody out of by Frankel out of Snow Fairy. Um, yeah, yeah, he is. He's, Why um, are you, are you, a... you said bread in the pink, I think it's purple. Pink, um, purple. Well, it is, but technically, uh, bread, technically, is bread in the pink. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ. Um, fucking hell. Um, I don't know sometimes. Am I wrong? Um, no. Yeah. Um, look, yeah, he, he was good. Um, he's another one for me. I think there's, um, I think there's better form out there. See, you know, this is where Dave would go off on one. Don't know. Look, he must be taking a break. Look, leave him off. Mm. <laughs> Traitor. Um, yeah, no, high definition, though, it was definitely the horse to take out that race, along with the winner in my book. And, um, yeah, I, I think Irish Derby. I'll be back now wherever he goes. It's big dangly oak. Epsom just worries me with that chap. Right. Um, where are we going next? This the Fiddy Stakes over a mile where Snow Lantern ran shite race. Primo uh, Bacchio, how we pronounce that, I don't know, uh, came on for her last run behind Alcohol Free, where she was 101 
fourth, beaten two and a half lengths. That was a good performance. Missed the break, one going away. She looks like she had to turn the corner in her career. Yeah, it was very good, really. I think that's a pretty good race. Um, I've just seen Love Is You Bled is what happened to her, which is a shame. Um, that's a real shame. Um, and, yeah, the, win the winner's gone and done it very well. Um, yeah, that's part of it, <laughs> really. Yeah, it's, good. It's, yeah, it's good. Like the, the winner's done it well, and, yeah, I, I don't really know. I don't really know where they go from that. It's a listed race, so no idea. you're going to have to step up again. But I think it was a good listed race. For the, for the grade, I think it was a good race. Just say it's going to step up and up and grade next time. Keep an eye out for us. We have to sound That's like it. Yeah, exactly. See, I don't bullshit, you know. I, like, I'll tell you, if I have no idea where that horse is going to run next time. I'm just so glad you're here so I can just ask you questions and I don't have to do anything. <laughs> right. On to the Yorkshire Cup, where we actually know something about this. Stairs is our game. From one mile two up, this is us. Uh, Spanish mission. But this was a, an out and out slog. Uh, one going away, one very well. Santiago back to something like his best in second. Sauron Prezi looked hit the front. I think it was two furlongs out. Looked like he was going to go away and win handy enough. Stopped to nothing, really. Yeah, he did. Um, hung a bit as well. And I don't, I don't know, a bit of an odd performance by him. Um, Could it be three, three quick runs in quick succession after a break caught up with him? Could be. Um, could be that he could need a he could need a little bit of a break now. Um, was wondering was it the ground? But no, he he goes well on the ground. Um, yeah, don't know really. Still ran well. He's only beaten three and a bit lengths. Um, Santiago ran a lovely race, and Spanish Mission did it very well actually. Um, now you gave him a chance in the preview on Wednesday. Yeah, I had to I had to remind you of that after the race when you were like, "What are you going on about?" And I, I put up Sir Ron Priestley and then put this lad up as one to follow, one one to keep an eye on because he'd outrun his odds. And um, he duly did. I mean, he got well, well punted. I think he was 10 to 1 when I, I was mentioning him. He went off 11 to 2. Has done it well. Um, he's a bit of a globe trotter, but when he runs here in, a, in grade two company, um, he actually runs pretty well and has, has, has got a very good record. Um, especially since he switched to Andrew Bolding. So, um, look, I, don't, I think grade ones are probably, he's going to be up against it a little bit. But, um, but yeah, he, he'll have his chance. I'm sure he'll be placed in them, but I'm sure something will come out and beat him. Go with the Gold Cup next? Surely after that, they have to go there. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'd have to give it a go, yeah. Uh, Vincent, 1982, said, Neaf Road drifted mad before that, before the off in that. Yeah, well, that's kind of a different situation. You quite, that was obviously that was his first run back, I think. Uh second run back. Second but... run back against horses like that. The money is going to be at the top of the market. He's going to drift because there's no one going near him. Yeah, ground, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Um, right. Where's my notes? What do we, what do we think about Santiago? Where we go, where did he go next with him? Probably go Gold Cup with him as well, won't they? Even go Irish St. Ledger. Could go Irish St. Ledger, something like that. Yeah, he's 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 looking like a stayer. Um yeah, I just it, he couldn't give them the weight last year. Now I know, especially these stayers, they can improve as, as they get older and they get physically bigger and they fill out into themselves. Um so look, maybe he will step it up, but he's another one. Mm. Right. I think something uh, beaten. Yeah, he's, he's that crossbar horse. Yeah, <laughs> drifted more than Goshen. <laughs> uh, right on to the Alroy Han, where <laughs> Alassie looked like an absolute monster. He has looked bloody good this year, hasn't he? I I wasn't all form after his last race, but, but good God, he was good. Yeah, I came around to him after his last run. I said, "I like this. This lad looks to have uh, improved a little bit here." And uh, Thunderous and Logician are no slouches. Uh, Logician, we obviously know what he did last year. Um, Thunderous ran a nice race at Newmarket the time before, and um, 
yeah, I thought it was an incredible performance, to be honest. Yeah, ne- never. If you like, if you backed him, you never had a moment's doubt whatsoever. Like I, people probably say, oh, what did he beat? Logician is not what he used to be. But you don't travel through a race like that and put it to bed like that if you're not mm. a top class horse. It's believe what you see, especially like the former group one winner there. And he yeah, made him look like a handicapper. I think they'll have to go to Ascot now for whatever the older he's horse. En- he's entered in the Hardwick. Races. I have a road <laughs> down for you. It's in the Hardwick. The Hardwick. There we go. Woohoo. The Hardwick. He's, all, he's entered in the Coronation Cup as well for Epsom. That's probably too close. Three weeks, six to five for that, and he's eight to one for the Hardwick. He did tell you now, he'd interest me in the Hardwick and eight to one. I'd have a little bit, yeah, of that. That, that is interesting. I know I've put up pile driver already for the Hardwick, so um, this is like the one race that ask. <laughs> I, I fancy m- multiple horses. Um, Speak, speaking of putting up horses for Asco, we're not doing it tonight because Dave's not here, he has one he really wants to tell you about. So, we're going to do one on Wednesday and one on next Sunday. Thank Christ for that, because I completely forgot about it. <laughs> I forgot until he taught me. <laughs> I was like, shit, no, I about that. No clue. <laughs> uh, yeah, what I, do you mean? I, I, I enjoy it when I um when I sit down and I start thinking about it. I actually enjoy it. But just if like like if we record in the Chantland video now and you said, right, Tom, chant the Maddie Post tip, I'd have one for you in like 30, 30 seconds. You wouldn't even have to look at it. You'd have one off the top of your I'd head. I'd probably just I'd check what price a couple of horses were and think pick a value horse that I've got in my mind for next year, right? Because I've got a few of them in my mind, obviously. And um the fucking Royal Ascot. Like I wouldn't have a clue if you put the gun to my head like I'd just go Batash, I think, and then go Batash <laughs> and, and lay him in run it when he doesn't get home. But I mean Uh Dave said he's going to coronation. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that. Can't believe he's texting away. Like. Yeah, well, like, like, could be sitting here. Like, he's watching us, but he could be here. Bad team player, <laughs> awful team player. Wow. My God. Right, the last one we're going to look at is Palace Pier, uh, winning locking stakes. Looks at the top of the one mile ladder now. It's going to take one hell of a performance to be him this year. Yeah, he is. Uh, he is an excellent, excellent racehorse. I really like him. Um, as I say, we were looking into this year, and I forgave him that performance at Ascot when something clearly wasn't right. He lost a shoe from memory, and um, yeah, it, it, that just didn't go right for me. Still wasn't even beaten far. I, I think this lad could be a really, really nice horse. And good old Shishi Fernandez back to doing what he does best. Just a head case, isn't he? That lad, oh, he's, he's dick. Can't you won't get him. rich back in him, is it? No, you'll you, be, you'll be poor. You see, what was a three furlongs out. I think I seen Frankie looking back to see where he was. Yeah, uh, Frankie, he's, about, he's about he's about twenty lengths behind you, boy. Chill. Yeah. Um, uh, that no, that race really that race good. was over like uh, two furlongs out. Um, look, Lady Bortop was close, him, but Frankie was never going for full pelt on him. And they were miles clear of, of top rank back in third. Yeah. yeah. 11 to 8 for the Queen Anne. Is it, would it be a price would interest you right now? Uh, no, but if he was 11 to 8 on the day, probably. <laughs> so Now we can breed. All the looking back is gone. Are we gonna, are we, were we going to talk about the French guineas today now? Do you want to? Oh yeah, just some Mark's Basilica was was very good. Um, I was really impressed with him actually. Um, he got a kind of a bad passage halfway through. Yeah, it? he got bumped around and lost a bit of his his position, um, but stayed on very well to win. Um, really good performance, a, a Group One winner at two, and um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see where they go with him. And as somebody pointed out, I know his. I'd say I'd say I'd say Coolmore is sick because his dam is by Galileo, but he's he's by Sayuni himself. Um so at least he's gonna be a little bit of an outcross to some of some mm. of the mares that they have there. Um I'd say they wished his his dam sire was anything but bloody Galileo. Um so um yeah. it was what was I gonna say? 
I don't know. You keep going there for a second. I can't remember. I was going to say no. Just I was just talking about his breeding, really. Um, but uh, I'd say they'll be mad to get him to stud now. He's a he's a dual Group One winner, and whatever he does from here on in as a bonus, he he'll be one of their one of their top ones for next year to go to stud. I imagine. I say he'll be kept in France now. French race for the rest of the season. Um, depends. I don't really know where to go with him. To be honest. Um, hey, Dave, where are they going next to them? Come on. Yeah, the, the Phillies race was interesting. I thought Mother Earth was going to win for all money. Um, done by a 66 to 1 shot. And done by a Jean Claude Rouge outsider, yeah. Um, who'd been beaten plenty. So, yeah, I, I don't know how good that form is, to be honest. Mm. There was one key component missing from a uh, very. Top class French racing day, Mr. Charles Boudot. Hmm. I thought you were going to say his friend then. <laughs> I was gonna, I was oh, like, oh, 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 his friend that, that, uh, missing off somewhere who shall not be named. Social media accounts gone. Gone off the face of the earth. What's happened here? Anybody know what happened, by the way? We're talking. We're all together. Anybody any idea what happened? Frozen. Uh, I, I I don't anyway. I've no idea what Tom happened. Tom Dustin, Tom's at the freezing. I got sent it in a... Um, um, am I back? Dave just texted me with what's going where. Um, so it's... Go and work for me. Look at that, Tom. Tom, work, will you? Come on the hell. Can you hear me? He is going to... Hello? Uh... St. James's Palace or French Derby. He's running the Group 1 on Arc Day last year, but because of the game feed... Ooh, oh, at the stream. Uh, yes. Ah, you're back. We're back. Jesus, you got rid of me all together. I didn't have the KQ to bring you back in. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'd love to know what happened to that Twitter account. Yeah. I, I only saw it. I got sent it in a WhatsApp group. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at the comment on the last one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm about Pierre Charles or, or what was going on there, but uh, yeah, he's gone for a long time by the looks of it. There's was out there for a long time anyway. Put two and two but, together, uh, yeah. No, um, the whole Pierre Charles thing is insane, really, isn't it? Um, you just wonder, uh, I was thinking this when I heard it as well. How do top class sports people not manage to like? There's so many of them get in trouble. Like you've got the cocaine stuff going on in racing with Rushing Murphy and, and whatnot, and then you've got Pierre Charles with this. It's like how how do you, Charlie Deutsch with the bloody car chase? It's it's like how do you not like what? me and you? you don't remember that though. No, no. it's where it was Charlie Deutsch. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, there was a there was a whole car chase. He he sped off from the cops or something. It's just, you look up that story; it's insane. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna recall all of it because I don't remember all of the facts now. But that that story's mental. Um, but um, I just don't get how like like you know me like me and you, Dave, like we we managed to stay out of trouble, and you haven't got a massive massive career. You know that's mm. that, that's there in your hands. I just don't, I don't understand it. Power goes to their head, Tom. It, it clearly does. Yeah. Um, I just, I just don't understand. If you had that much talent and that much of a career, how you wouldn't be able to stop yourself from doing something as gross as that, or or something as stupid as putting powder up your nose. Like it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, apparently he's had been charged with one more than one allegation of rape. Because this isn't the first allegation. It's not the first allegation. No, anyway. I was sure I heard it last year. Yeah, it was, it was out around last year and stuff. So, um, it's fucking. It's, it's terrible, really. Sorry about my language. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's like that. That that kind of stuff is awful. Um, mm. But I just don't know how you don't manage to keep your head on your shoulders and and don't lose it up in the sky somewhere. So. Dave just texted me there. I kept him out of trouble with Ben Pauling at Punchestown. 
You're welcome, Dave, by the way. That, Jesus, that, Tom, you have we no... Never, we might never have this podcast if that incident happened. You have no idea how close this came to getting out of hand. If we, walk, go, uh, walk if we go anywhere, I, I'm bringing cash. I, I, I'm nearly going to have a taxi on standby as soon as we go into any bar. <laughs> so I can just leave whenever I want to. <laughs> you, don't, uh, you don't trust it, but I won't blame you. Like I'll, we be gone. I'll, I'll be gone out that door. Good luck. <laughs> walked into the bathroom. And I seen Ben Pauling. And I seen him. I looked at him and I went, oh, don't. Please don't. That fucker done to Willoughby Court. Ah, come here, you get out. <laughs> the funniest one I ever saw. And I don't know if I've brought it up on the show before. I think I told you and Dave. Was uh, Matt Chapman and Gordon Elliott having a bit of a Barney in um, in a bar in Newmarket one day? <laughs> that I th- was. <laughs> I just stood there like, "What is going on here?" I think it you mentioned it once, but tell everyone about. Oh no, they were just, just. I ended up at the bar, and they happened to be next to me, and uh, just turned around. They were just just having a pop off each other, like just one person would say one thing, another would say another thing, and. It was just surreal that you know there was actually a row going on, like so. Um, yeah, mad stuff. But. One more thing before we go. Um, Bob Baffert last night. I was watching CBS's coverage of the, of the Preakness. How did that? How was that horse allowed run? Where his win is still under investigation with B samples and so on and so forth. I think that's it, isn't it? That they're waiting on his B sample. Did you hear the show she came out with then? No, I I didn't I didn't hear that. I only saw some of the replays from last night. Oh, he was he wasn't actually at the track. They oh like the American CBS gave him gave it into him like. Oh really? They, oh, they didn't hold back. Whatsoever. <laughs> it was great. Go that's, back and um, that's interesting now because if 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 the press start throwing you under the book, why not throwing you under the book? He bloody it's caused these calls this himself, but if the press start turning against you, then you know the authorities might feel it's safe to do something a bit more linear, a, a, a bit more long term. You know, mm. um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that plays out. Because I, I've seen a lot of Americans on on Twitter, and um, they're they're disgusted. They've they've had enough, um, and some tra- big trainers, big jockeys, and big racing names over there, and they've, they've just had enough of it. Um, yeah, and, uh, so, I think as well. I, I was watching the American fella that's always on at the races. Oh, what's his name? Can't think of his name, but he he went on one about it as well. They're not happy. But I saw oh, Peter Fornatow. Peter Fornatow, yeah, 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 yeah. No, he was having none of us. He was calling yeah. and coming out with choice excuses and shit like that. No, it's it's good that they're actually calling them out for once. Like if you had ITV yeah. and all that over here, they wouldn't do anything about it. They just sweep it under. Well, they, 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 they probably just wait until um, wait until the the Kentucky Derby next year and play a play a twenty minute review on on how the winner got thrown out last year. That's how they. That's probably how they'd play it. To be honest, it's good programming, by the way, isn't it? First day of the Chetland Festival. Still not over that. I'm still not. I can't. I just, that's another thing. Like these things that you just can't believe you're seeing or hearing, and that was one of them. I it's was just, waiting for the I was waiting for the upbeat punchline and it just never came. What was it? The, after the after the Supreme Novice Hurdle, a good 20 minute montage on how why Shetland went ahead, why the Corona first was on, and why he shouldn't have went ahead, and all the bad things that were attached with it because of Shetland went ahead. What are you doing? Oh, we can't go back over. It was mental, though. The, the, one of the one of the worst bits in it was when they were interviewing people at the track the year before. So, bearing in mind the coronavirus has been around for about a month in our minds for that at that stage, and they were like, "Oh no, we're not worried about it." It's like trying to show them up as in, well, we know a lot more now. A year on, yeah. I was just, I was just horrific. I'd gone about, I'd gone for hours about that. Now, I I didn't watch ITV's coverage for the rest of the week. I just went straight to racing TV, and that was it. The only word, the only thing I like about ITV's coverage is the um, the interviews with jockeys as soon as they finish. I flick over for that. 
the only thing that keeps me sometimes on jump season is Ruby. Ruby just tells me. Ruby just tells me what it is. What'd you say? Francesca. <laughs> oh, no. How is she um, in a job? Uh, Ruby, Ruby's class. Ruby, 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 Ruby. Ruby as an analyst, an, um, an analyst, analysis is um, is epic. And I, I obviously liked him as a jockey, but I thought his, when he was riding, I thought his personality was a bit off. Um, couldn't really take to him very cold kind of personality. By God, he's good at his job now. He he's is on, exceptional yeah. at his job. Yeah. He, um, him and um, what's her name? Lydia. Lydia, Lydia Hislop on the road to Shetland. That's unreal. That's a cracking show. That is a, a, a we probably shouldn't be promoting other yeah, people's shows, but that is that's an absolutely brilliant show. That's one show that I watch every week in the run channel. The segment they done not this Shetland, this Shetland before where Lydia and Ruby actually walked the track at Shetland. Yeah. That if you haven't seen it, go go back and watch it. It's brilliant. What Ruby s- explains every furlong. From the start to finish, and where you should be, where you shouldn't be, why you shouldn't kick, where you should be positioned on a front run or hole up horse, and so on. It's unreal. Like, and if if you ever want to know what makes a top jockey different from the rest, listen to Ruby Walsh and how he's able to describe racing and race riding. Um, that's that's the difference. Mm. Any anyone could. I got a ridden in bloody. Probably could have ridden the bumpers, but I could have ridden point to points, definitely. But Jesus, the difference there is unbelievable from from some lads and even some professional lads. You know, it's the whole they know what they're going to do before they know what they're going to do. Hmm. They know, like Ruby would know how fast the, you're going for the grade. Um, you know, and it, it's one of those that. If you're next to Ruby in a race, you're probably going the right speed. Mm. That's the thing I, I got from all the retired jocks and Barry and all them are talking to each other. I looked around. If I seen Ruby next to me, if I seen Paul Carberry next to me, I knew I was in the right place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. On that note, we'll wrap up this episode of Target Points. So I've got, I've oh, got a horse to follow, Andrew. Oh, Tom has a horse to follow. Far away, Tom. Eastern Tornado. Like Horse of uh, Michael P. Horring, uh, Horring, Hor- Horrigan. Hor- Jesus. Um, Canford Cliffs Horse um, has been, its form is 0, 0, 0, 0, 193 rate right break, 2 3. Um, it should have won at Sligo. It should have won at Sligo on the 2nd of May. And it should have won at Navan on the 15th of May. Somehow, in one mile five races, it has found God untold trouble. Um, was Colin uh, Keane on this last day? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. Back to thing. Um, I backed it as well, actually, and I, I think it should have just, just should have won. Um, it's probably going to go up another couple of pounds, but it's it's off. It was off forty seven the other day. Um, you know, this 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 should go and win a couple of races. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree with that. Go back to the last time. Should have won. Should have won the time before that. Right. Oh, there's a couple of comments, and I, I'll address that one anyway. Because uh, no, go on. Darren says, uh, "What did you make of Joven's run the other evening? Um, all was slowly in stride. Yeah, he just ran crap, didn't he? Um, thought he was going okay-ish. Um, unfortunately, he just ran terrible. The other horse whose name I'm going to remember." In a second, um, needs a trip. Do not give up on him. Match, no, that's not him. Nice to meet. <laughs> Forgot his name. Twenties into nine, um, beaten twenty-four lengths. Just gallops one pace. Needs a trip now. Head carriage is questioned his head carriage last day. Um, so if they up him to two and a half plus on his next start, I'll, I'll have a little interest because he'll be a big price. Um, but yeah, don't don't go too crazy on him now. Cool, Abula. Uh, I'm trying to think of that. Is it? I think I'm just going off to um, try and get some sleep before Wednesday night because I won't be sleeping at all. <laughs> no, you will not. <laughs> right. So on Wednesday we are back with 
a preview of all the Pimlico horses running on Thursday, and we're going to see how sweaty Tom is, how nervous he is, has he slept, hasn't he slept, how much has he drank, how much hasn't he drank. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I just don't know what the answer is. I don't know if a glass of red is the answer or if just praying, sleeping tablets. I don't know. Just get a pump into your veins, you'll be grand. I'm not even like, I, imagine we went there with three chances. Like, I'm not really expecting any of them to go and win. Like, um, I'm expect, hoping they run well, but uh, yeah, like, oh, look, we'll see. Let's just get to the next person. And we're keeping it to five minutes. We're not going any further than that on it. Because I'll end up just ranting and, and bloody getting worried. Yeah, I'll leave you rant so and get worried. Anyway. We're back with that. Tom's little mental breakdown and so on and so forth. So it's going to be TV gold. Uh, we're back with the Irish Guineas preview as well. That's happening next weekend. So again, lads, thanks for watching. Keep liking, subscribing. I'll be back on Wednesday with another weekend preview.